Welcome class. Today we're going to be looking at a Velocity Banking case study using a second position HELOC home equity liner credit on a husband and wife household. Starting with the four major numbers, we've got income $10,300, expenses $9,537, total debt $353,571.15. Leaving us with a monthly net cash flow after all expenses are paid, $763 a month. Okay, so we got good income, we got some low cash flow. We need to work on that cash flow. We need to position this family in a better overall financial understanding so that we can proceed and move faster, further to financial freedom and hitting all of their goals. Speaking of which, I've laid out for you some of the goals and dreams, aspirations that this household has and how I'm going to cater the strategy that I'm implementing to accomplish those goals, right? This is customized personal finance for you, right? For this household. So dealing with husband and wife, husband's 43 years old, wife is 40. Okay. Ideally, they want to retire within five years. Okay. So that would make husband right around 48 wife around 45 not bad so that's 10 15 almost 20 years earlier than the norm in america right so that's that's a win if we achieve that right but we're not going to retire in the normal sense right we're going to retire from having to work and then putting us in a position where we want to work and now we're working for purpose rather than for money Okay, so that's what we're solving for. In addition to retiring early, they want to implement the infinite banking concept. So that'll probably probably happen five years within that time frame for husband and wife. So that's two policies plus kids involved. Wife wants to become a financial coach. She wants to do exactly what I do. Your personal finance geek of the 21st century. She wants to learn velocity banking and teach it to others. She wants to learn infinite banking and teach it to others. She wants to learn kingdom authority, right? Building a practice, social media, influence and impact the whole night okay that's what she wants uh, husband and wife both together want to build business credit they want to start a brokerage account so they can start investing so that'll get achieved within the five years building business credit get achieved within the five years um, and then husband specifically wants to go full-time ministry so once he leaves his career okay wants to go into full-time ministry and property management parentheses real estate investing right so real estate investing he'll have but also wants to manage properties uh, and wife wants to do financial coaching so that's a really really nice uh, shift from their careers husband is in airplane coding wife is a secretary at a school so that is a complete shift into a whole different atmosphere right in the meantime we we've laid out the goals we've laid out the direction we want to go in how can we now use velocity banking to help position us, get us there faster, and then we'll pivot to focus more on the goals, right? So initially we're solving for increased cash flow, reduce expenses, position, increase capital, increase access to capital, build credit on the personal side, just overall better discipline with the money that we do have. We need to become better stewards overall. So now let's dive right into the strategy itself. So using a home equity line of credit in the second position they got approved for thirty two thousand five hundred ninety seven dollars that is a credit limit 2.99 percent is the intro rate period for one year which is a phenomenal opportunity considering the environment that we're in today i am recording this video in october mid-october 2022 last time i checked interest rates are around six plus percent 6.25 and by the time this video gets released the interest rate might have been higher then right so they qualified for a rate much lower than the norm 2.99 all we are simply doing with velocity banking in the beginning is moving higher interest into lower interest that 2.99 interest that we've been given by the bank we're going to manipulate that interest down all the way to zero we're going to completely offset our borrowing costs which means that as we're paying off debt as we're removing these debts we're simply going faster 
than someone with the same amount of income, same amount of cash flow. We're going faster because we pay what? Less interest. That is the one variable when comparing apples to apples, right? Extra payments versus velocity banking. Say all the numbers are, are the same strategy of the person, whether they're minimalist, uh, frugal, cutting back, right? Let's say they did all that stuff and they're still, we're still at the same income numbers, same expense numbers, same cash flow. The one last variable is interest. Who pays less interest will win because your cash flow becomes stronger towards the principal dollars. So now that you have a full understanding of that, let's dive into the actual strategy of velocity banking itself. Okay. What do we typically do guys? We look at the credit limit. We take the credit limit times it by 66% because we have to determine our what? Our chunk, okay? We've got the four major numbers. We know our debt tool. We've analyzed the goals. Now we need to determine the chunk. From there, we calculate costs, right? Determine the chunk. Credit limit times 66%, you're gonna get a number somewhere around 21K. Cash flow times 12, that's your range. Cash flow times 12, 66% of the line of credit or two thirds of the line of credit, you have a chunk range. This is their first time implementing velocity banking. So they're simply going to get their feet wet. Okay. What I mean by getting our feet wet is we don't necessarily chunk the full two thirds amount, nor do we just do cash flow times 12. Maybe we go somewhere around the middle. So we were at a number somewhere around 15 K upwards of 18, 19. We're around 18,400. The reason why we got that number was based off of what we're attacking, what debts we're gonna wipe out. So in this scenario here, after looking at all their debts amongst the 353,000, most of it is mortgage debt. They have one credit card here, $9,718.74. Monthly payments, 122 bucks, 23.99%. I could easily move 23.99 to 2.99 in one shot, right? So 9,718.74 right off the table, without a doubt. Next, we have an opportunity with one of the mortgages that they have, okay? Their escrow was, uh, I forget what the term is, but it was under, so it didn't, it didn't cover the previous year in taxes or something like that so basically they owed more right to be specific they owe three thousand four hundred dollars more so what the mortgage company did was they actually it, it increases their mortgage payment technically right on a monthly basis so they can either pay thirty four hundred dollars up front which would bring the mortgage payment down somewhere around four hundred dollars or more right i estimated down just said 400 it'll be a little bit more but their uh basically their mortgage payment increased over 400 plus dollars right so if we were to make a chunk 3400 in one shot brings the mortgage payment down which means more money stays in the debt tool the difference got it so we're not paying off debt but we are increasing cash flow for that little move right there so that's $3,400, 971874, then 3,400. So that's 122 plus say $400 or more. We're looking at a recovery of $522 in cash flow moving forward after the chunk. The difference between the 9,734, somewhere around 5K or so. And we said, okay, let's do a principal only payment towards the mortgage. 3.25% amortized move a portion of that to 2.99 2.99 becomes zero so we're going to maximize that one year interest rate for as long as possible right so we're doing a little mini chunk towards the mortgage little chunk towards escrow chunk towards credit card so that's the the breakdown of the full chunk first chunk 18,400 recovers $522 in cash flow, moves 23.99 to 2.99, 3.25 to 2.99 portion of it. From there, velocity banking begins, right? Income, all of the income goes into 
the home equity line of credit in the second position. From there, you'll notice expenses went from 9,537. Now we're at 8,504.16, right? That's money that actually leaves the HELOC, right? And what remains is the uh, cash flow itself, okay? Now, in addition to recovering $522 in cash flow, if you look over to this side over here, we have another tool, debt tool at our disposal. We've got our main debt tool, it's our HELOC. We have a second debt tool, a 0% credit card. We got a $12,000 limit with Discover, 0% till May of 2023, okay? 0% on balance transfers and purchases. We're gonna leverage this credit card for purchases. No sense in borrowing and paying transaction fees three, four, five percent No need. We're simply gonna run bills that we can identify that will accept credit card as payment without any fees. And we're gonna park those bills on the credit card. Now, if you wanna be even slicker, you can identify bills that you can actually switch from monthly to annual. And typically, when you switch from paying a subscription type of a service from monthly to annual, you save money on the whole expense itself. Plus, you get an additional one to three plus percent in cashback rewards by running it through a card that offers cashback rewards, points, miles, etc. Right? So it's a double savings on top of the savings that we're getting from the HELOC, which means even less money is actually coming out of the HELOC because it's staying parked in this credit card for a period of time. Very interesting strategy, strategy how we're stacking and stacking, right? So main debt tool, HELOC, four major numbers. We got our, our main chunk going. Simultaneously, while this is going on, we've got this credit card. $12,000 credit limit, discover, 0%. We're gonna run bills. I've identified $7,329.48 of bills in their living expenses that we could potentially switch from monthly to annual. I did not calculate what the savings would be, but technically out of pocket, this number would actually be less. So I didn't factor that in, right? I'm, I'm creating room for error, I'm being conservative. This would recover temporary, not permanent, because these are bills that I have to pay for no matter what, right? Whether I get out of debt or not, there's still gonna be bills I, I will have to pay for the rest of my life. So temporary cash flow recovery is $610.84 from the 7,329.48. Because it's 0%, the monthly minimum required payment is probably gonna be 1% of the balance. So say 75, I rounded it up, call it $100, is gonna be the monthly minimum payment, minus 100 from the 61084, you get 51084 on a monthly basis and moving forward. So that means 51084 gets added to this cash flow 522, which brings you to that number of 8,504.16, okay? You see how that happened? Cash flow recovery from actually paying off a debt paying the escrow, that's 522. From this $7,329.48 worth of bills, where you where it's this is about maybe seven or eight bills that you would pay up for the whole year, 12 months in advance, right? All adds up somewhere around this number, 7,300. When I all I did was add the monthly payment of those bills, I got 61084 minus $100 because you have to make monthly payments to this credit card. So we basically just parked $7,000 in a 0% card till May of 2023. This is going to help accelerate our velocity banking strategy and completely offset that 2.99 interest, which is phenomenal. So now the balance, I'm in October working with the client at the beginning of October. 2022. I, again, overestimated left room for error and pretended as if we started in November, disregarding any cash flow 
for October. Okay. So these numbers are overestimated. The client in actual practice will beat my numbers. It's going to give them major confidence, right? Plus, we're also saying, hey, worst case scenario, here's what it should look like, right? Somewhere around here, right? And considering that you're still going way faster than the traditional model, which is pretty cool. So when you're in actual practice of velocity banking, you're going way faster, okay? So by the end of November, not the beginning, end of November, balance is somewhere around 16604 and 16 cents. This results in an average borrowing cost in the first month around 30 bucks nothing crazy that gets offset by the credit card interest the 23.99 the portion of that 3.25 uh, plus the the velocity itself money staying parked in the heloc bringing that number down okay brilliant stuff here december end of december right income goes in expenses out cash flow stays balance 14,808 32 january 13,1248 11,000 february march 9,42080 april 7,62496 not bad okay come april what needs to happen right that next month i have to make a chunk towards that credit card i was leveraging so the balance paying $100 a month right for 5 6 months or however long it is from October to April of 2023, this balance will be somewhere around $6,700. In reality, it'll be less, right? Because I overestimated on that number. That'll bring my balance owed on the HELOC higher. Here's another example, another case study of us not waiting to hit zero before making your next chunk on your debt tool. We don't have to wait till we hit zero, especially when you have a good amount of space in there right in credit limit so april may hits income goes in money's coming out being withdrawn to pay off that credit card on its due date avoid any interest at that point that 61084 now increases our expenses so you have to when you're doing your numbers make sure you don't forget to increase your expense back up because now it's coming out of the HELOC rather than the credit card. You're still going to use a credit card. Might be the same one in this case. Might be the same credit card. But it's getting paid off each and every month moving forward. Unless they find another 0% credit card and they want to play that game. Which I don't mind. I tell my clients, be careful, remember not to over leverage, okay, if you got a $12,000 credit limit, no more than two thirds of that. And even then I wouldn't even, you know, abuse it too much, really base it off those bills that we can recover a lot of savings and cashback rewards on in the first place, right? So I always let my clients know, you know, no more than one card, nothing crazy, especially when you're first starting out. Once you're an expert, you do you. If you think you're an expert, on velocity banking you do you right i'm i'm not going to argue against your strategy you know what you're doing i'm talking to people who are intermediate beginner somewhat advanced you know you you're doing these uh velocity banking strategies on your own numbers last thing you want to do is put yourself in a in a negative situation negative cash flow situation or an over leveraged position especially in in this economy right we, we do want to have cash flow available or capital to work with right so come may right income went in expenses come out expenses increased because i paid off that credit card and now the heloc is going to be paying that credit card off in full each and every month so expenses come up that means cash flow re reduces a bit may the balance was somewhere end off around 12,558.60 end of May, right? We're going to do one month of velocity banking, just one month, because we have another debt that is expiring on interest. If you look at the top here, we have a loan initially back in October of 2022. We're now in May 
approaching June of 2023. Okay. But back then the balance was at 8,398.99. Monthly payment was 533.67, zero percent. Right. So we've been making 533, 533, 533 each and every month as we're going through velocity banking. The balance would go down to 4,663.30. Okay. So that's our chunk. Right. June. Boom. Money goes. Money gets withdrawn from the HELOC to pay off that loan in full. I recover 533.67 in cash flow. Avoid any interest. Right from accruing on that loan from there end of june after all income went in expenses came out cash flow stayed we're at fifteen thousand nine thirty six ninety. not bad keep it going income goes in expenses out look at my expenses now it's all the way down from nine thousand five thirty seven now we're at eight thousand four eighty one thirty three so by the end of august we're somewhere around seven thousand 455.57. Notice how the pattern, when you're doing velocity banking, you're going to notice a pattern in your own numbers, indications when you should be getting ready for the next chunk. Notice how in April, when the balance hit somewhere around 7,000 and some change, we were like, it was forced. We need to make a chunk, right? So that was just a forced situation because of that credit card. But then here came around August again, and we're like, hmm. We shouldn't wait again, right? There's another opportunity here. We could totally make a chunk, right? So after August, moving into September, we're gonna do another chunk where? Towards the mortgage. We're still on that 2.99, doesn't expire till October, but we don't know what's gonna happen with interest rates. Even if interest rates rise, this thing goes to two from 2.99, jumps all the way to six and a half, seven, even if it jumped to a high rate three times where we were at, you can still manipulate the rate below 3.25%. And even if the rate is higher than 3.25, when you're dealing with amortized interest, 3.25 is not actually 3.25. It's higher when you look at the payment itself, right? If you do 186,000, times it by 3.25 percent you're gonna get a number but if you actually compare that number to the life of the loan it's it's more interest than the number you have okay so you would have to see what that total number is and then compare it to what the actual interest is you're gonna get an, a, a much higher number than whatever rate our debt tool is at that still doesn't that doesn't mean that i'm just gonna you know, accept any rate out here when I'm searching for my debt tool, right? This is why I tell you guys, do your homework, watch my videos, whether it's mine, Mike Adams, Quack Brothers, Matthew Pilmore, uh, Velocity Channel, right? Connor J. Wallace, whoever it is, we're all letting you know, don't be applying for the first HELOC you see, or the first PLOC or the first credit card. Do market research, okay? Shop around. Find the best rate you can. Find the best terms overall. You're not just looking at rate. We need the best terms overall. If you don't know these the, the, the lingo and the terminology, the language, you don't know how to read the terms and agreements of an offer, right? You don't have a relationship with a bank. Guys, don't apply right away. Be patient. Keep doing snowball. Keep doing avalanche. Keep getting your numbers in line. Do a monthly P&L statement for yourself each and every month. Pump the brakes. I'm seeing some people, you know, recently I had a client who was all excited, got a home equity line of credit, 8.75%. I go on the website, right? There's a freaking offer, same bank. I was like, what? what's the name of the bank? Genesis Credit Union out in California or something like that. I type in Genesis, but with a Y. I say, okay, look on the website. HELOC, 4.99 intro rate offer. And I'm looking at him like, buddy, the bank is offering a different rate than what you just got. You need to call them back and have them switch the rate. Now, here's the thing. Banks are not just going to hand you things. 
you're gonna have to be direct but in a very very appropriate manner and behavior in this case this person was unsuccessful in switching that rate they got blocked by their gatekeepers i told them it's not over you need to go back and talk again because you applied for this tool during the intro rate offer period that they're promoting to the public you got approved for that same product but with but you did not get the rate okay unacceptable then listen i had another client she applied for a heloc right she knew about this particular offer right they had an intro rate offer period just like this one on the board some low rate for one year she went through all the paperwork everything come to the the last stages of signing right her rate changed and the bank tried to tell her oh because interest rates have risen right we're, we're in an environment okay as i'm recording october interest rates have jumped multiple times so that means that when you're applying for your debt tool at banks today it's one thing tomorrow it's another but when you initially apply for a tool if there's an offer involved you need to make sure that offer is is locked in and doesn't change despite what's happening in the in the marketplace right in the economy with rates okay be firm be direct have your relationship have that person you can talk to at the bank if you're watching all my videos on the case studies you're not going to mess this up anyways her and i this is a client we're going back and forth i'm like no 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 tell them that 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 she did that the bank ended up honoring the initial offer they made to her as they should she now has that lower rate we're now doing velocity banking and we're knocking it out the park so i i stopped there to you know let you guys know when we're trying to offset borrowing costs the interest rate on a simple interest revolving line of credit technically yes it's not that important because the rate we can manipulate it all the way down to zero one two three percent in most cases but that doesn't mean i'm gonna go get a 12 percent 15 18 percent 21 percent line of credit no i would rather you take an extra month two months to build that relationship with the bank to improve your credit score to improve your dti to improve your utilization to improve any dings marks inquiries removals on your credit report so that you can get the tier one rating the best rating and get the best rate doesn't hurt right so with that being said let's come back to the board right we started in october of 2022 we're now all the way in august september of 2023 we've made one two made one big chunk and then two mini chunks and now a big chunk again fourteen thousand fifty eight forty five cents is going to go towards the principal of that mortgage payment at the top here that 3.25 percent and we're going to do velocity banking income in expenses out balance will end up somewhere around nineteen thousand six ninety five thirty five if you're wondering how did you get that fourteen thousand fifty eight forty five number again two-thirds of the credit limit on our HELOC, then I you're gonna get a number somewhere out twenty one thousand some change, minus that from what's owed currently, that's seven thousand four fifty five fifty seven. Boom, you're gonna get that fourteen thousand fifty eight forty five number balance right. End of September, okay. October seventeen eight. November sixteen thousand. December fourteen thousand. Some other things that's going to actually bring this balance probably back down somewhere around 7,000 some change somewhere in this process is I did not factor in that both husband and wife received bonuses in 2022 and they'll get bonuses in 2023. I'm also not factoring in promotion. I'm also not factoring in another credit card usage, right? And many other factors that this number is actually be way less 
So what I'm projecting to them, letting them know that, hey, by January, spring, summer time of 2024, we should look into upgrading our debt tool, which would have expired by October 2023 from one year, right? It would have expired. It would have gone up to whatever the rate is. Let's say it's high, six, seven percent, it jumps, whatever. I would tell them we can upgrade to a first lien HELOC, possibly get another introductory rate offer because it's an, a new tool, right? And it'll be a much bigger line. And then we can pay off the mortgage in one shot, okay? And now we have access to a very, very large line of credit that we can then shift from paying off debt to now focusing more on the goals, just servicing the debt, creating more value, which results in more cash flow. Okay. And we can spend more time in the areas of their skills, gifts, and talents all throughout this process, by the way, in 20, for the rest of 2022, all of 2023, I'm coaching wife on becoming a financial coach, right? She's going to enroll in my program on how to become a financial coach without any certifications and she'll be part of a, co of a community right part of the finance geek ministry so she's gonna be involved in that that's great so i'm gonna be working on her mostly husband's gonna be doing his thing with full-time ministry figuring that out he's got more knowledge in property management than i do so i'm just working the numbers he's doing this he's he's bringing in the income right most of the income he's just bringing it in wife and i are the numbers people so in this household it's it's wife that's good with the numbers managing it multiplying it right husband is good at providing the number right mostly bringing in the income right so he's good at just making the money here you go wife boom handle that wife works with denzel boom now it's two minds working to multiply the fruit that we have here so it's a really good relationship overall that should be really really solid i'll expose her to other people that can solve diff these different things for example when it comes to building business credit boom i'm sending her to sebastian boyer when it comes to starting a brokerage account I might send her one or two youtube channels that i enjoy uh watching they're very educational uh when it comes to full-time ministry he already has people that he can lean on for that property management. He can lean on for that financial coaching, infinite banking. She's leaning on me for those two things and then retiring early. That's all me all day. We'll have a lot of fun in that department. Another thing I totally left out, totally left it out was all the way at the top. If we go all the way back to October 2022 in this example here, in addition to making that escrow payment of the $3,400 from that initial chunk, if you remember, we can also communicate with the mortgage company and ask them, hey, can we remove escrow? Am I eligible to remove escrow or if they have any PMI, which I don't think they do, but can we remove escrow from the mortgage payment, which means more money can sit parked in the HELOC and then when it's due, they're responsible, they'll just pay it in a chunk form, right? Which will cause a difference in terms of how much faster we go especially when we transition to a first lien HELOC, that's more money that's staying in the tool itself, right? So that's another, uh, you know, dollars and cents, right? It's not a huge difference, but over a period of time, my goodness, guys, again, boils down to who pays less in interest. That's who's going faster, right? So 2024 is looking real pretty. That's when we're focusing more on that top line number. From there, I'm no longer concerned about debt only thing that remains is a car lease and two mortgages that they have there, there's no consumer debt there's no outstanding loans student loans high interest credit card debt nothing so we're in a very very good overall position not bad not bad at all my name is denzel rodriguez your personal finance geek of the 21st century on this youtube channel we cover the velocity banking concept infinite banking and kingdom authority okay bringing faith and finances together my mission is working with single moms divorced moms widows moms in general that want to regain their kingdom authority you want to regain your authority in the household by mastering your personal finances and stepping into 
okay? Your purpose, walking in purpose, transitioning from having to work to wanting to work and then working, working towards purpose. Now you're working for purpose. You're not working for someone. You're not even working for you, right? That's what the world tells you. But in the kingdom, you're working for the glory of God because he provides all things and therefore all things refers to your skills, gifts, and talents, which was given by God. So now you have favor, you're anointed, you're now blessed to walk in, in his authority, in his confidence. You, he's at, He has extended his heavenly authority to you to have what? Dominion. To manage and multiply and replenish the fruit, rinse, lather, repeat. So whether you're in the world, out of the world, you got to know how to operate in both realms, right? And whether you believe or don't believe at the end of the day, listen, you don't need to pray to get financial results, right? You don't. Let's just be honest. Look at Elon Musk. Look at Jeff Bezos. Look at Bill Gates. Look at all these people, right? I'm just letting you know what my intentions are, what my end game is when you work with the finance geek. My end game is matters of the kingdom. That's where I'm ultimately leading you to. So I'm just providing that transparency and honesty up front. That's how I operate, right? So when you're, when you start getting into philosophical questions on your money, I'm only coming, you're now giving me authority to hear my philosophy, which is coming from kingdom, right? And that's all you're going to get. I know how to operate in the world. So I'm going to give you simple, logical strategies. We never have to talk kingdom. That's cool. I want, I still want to help you win at least financially solve about 80 90 percent of your problems in the beginning right and then we can start having deeper three fourth fifth dimension type questions and dialogues that we can debate over right that would cause us to create better solutions and more impact for more people okay so there's a lot of links in the description below you can visit my website denzelrodriguez.com you can see what i'm all about study me google me until you know, like, and trust me, get on my email newsletter, get in communication with me. If you're like, I'm ready to incorporate a very customized financial strategy to get my whole entire household on the right page, whether it's complete debt freedom or paying off a certain amount of debt to become debt leveraged to multiply your income and create financial freedom, right? I meet you where you're at, very adaptable, and we grow from there. Have a wonderful day. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.